Hello guys and welcome back. Um, this lesson we are looking at integration of exponential and logarithmic functions. Please don't forget to subscribe and to click on the notifications so that immediately we leave a video online, you will be the first to be notified. So our focus in this lesson is on the integration of exponential and logarithmic functions. So let us start with the exponential functions. We will look at them in different cases. Let us start first of all with the function y is equal to e to the power ax. Simply the integration of e to the x is e to the x in which case a is equal to 1. What happens if a is not equal to 1? Like we saw in differentiation, when you differentiate e to the x, you have e to the x and equally in integration when you integrate e to the x, you have e to the x. Now, what happens if the value, the coefficient of x is not equal to 1? That's the first thing we'll be looking at. So, we'll start by substitution, which is mostly used in exponential integrals. So, throughout exponential integrals, we'll mostly be using a substitution. If you have not looked at substitution, you look at the previous video before this one. It is on integration by use of substitution. Let's take an example of this function e to the power ax dx. So here we'll start by letting our e to the power x to be equal to u. And differentiating both sides, we'll have du to be equal to a dx. And from here, we have 1 over a du to be equal to dx. What I'm doing here is such that I can replace this dx here by du using some coefficients and modifications and also replace e to the power ax by e to the power u so at this point we can now write this as integral as 1 over a i'm now replacing this dx by du we know that dx is equal to 1 over a du so i have 1 over a du this is my dx which i have replaced now i'm going to replace e to the power ax by e to the power u because we have said let ax be equal to u so actually we are doing substitution as you can see this is dx which has been replaced or substituted and now our e to the power ax will be equal to e to the power u now we can easily integrate this one right yeah because from here we know that e to the power x dx is e to the power x plus a constant so this will give us 1 over a e to the power u plus a constant of integration but we know that u is equal to x from our legs here therefore we replace this value by what's supposed to be there we will have 1 over a e to the power ax plus k prime so the constant now has changed because we have done a transformation okay so here we have actually transformed from integrating with respect to the x to integrating with respect to the u and that's why this transformation follows here with this transformation of the constants from u back to x generally when we integrate e to the power a uh, e to the power a x dx we have e to the x on a plus a constant this is the general rule you see this in your formula booklets as well another example Another example, example 2, we have the integral of e to the power 4x plus 3 dx. So equally by substitution, we will let this 4x plus 3 to be equal to a u. So let u be equal to 4x plus 3. We differentiate both sides with respect to the variables on those sides. We will have the u to be equal to 4 dx. And we can now do a transformation or replacements from here we know that we can replace the x by 1 over 4 d u so we now come back to equation here we replace this dx by 1 over 4 d u that's the replacement and we will replace or we transform e to the power 4 x plus 3 into e to the power u so this is the transformation that we have done we can simply integrate this one now and the result will be 1 over 4 e to the power u plus k but uh, u is 4x plus 3 from this point. 
So this gives us 1 over 4e to the power 4x plus 3 plus the constant of integration. Please, as you're studying this online, make sure you also solve along or at the end of this video, make sure you solve these exercises because watching will not actually enhance the skills of drill and practice which is required in mathematics and other drill and practice subjects like physics and chemistry. So you have to solve along, pause and solve along as you watch or at the end you solve all through. Okay. Example 3. Uh, we have e to the power 5 minus 9x dx. We follow the same procedure. We will let our 5 minus 9x, please uh, talk along as I'm talking. So we have u to be equal to 5 minus 9x. We differentiate both sides with respect to the variables. We will have du to be equal to 9 of 9 dx. So uh, dx will become minus 1 over 9 du. Okay. So this is what we have here. We can now uh, do the transformation here or substitute. We we'll now have minus 1 over 9 du, which is our dx. And equally, we'll replace e to the power 5 minus 9x by what? e to the power u, correct. So uh, integration will give us minus 1 over 9 e to the power u plus k, but k is 5 minus 9x. We transform back to x and also we transform this constant from k to k prime. Or you can use c or any other things, okay. Um, after solving, make sure you take uh, numerous examples to actually strengthen yourself in these skills. Now, let us look at the second case where we have y is equal to e to the f of x. Now, we don't have ax. We don't have ax plus b like a line. We now have f of x, which is some sort of a function. So, if f of x is a polynomial, we still do substitution. In the previous case, we are also polynomials, but we are not looking at that lower class. So let's take this example, example 4. We have this example, 6x squared plus 2x times the integral uh, times e to the power 2x cubed plus x squared dx. So what we can look at here, first of all, is uh, look at the power of this e. We have e to the power 2x cubed plus x squared. If you differentiate this power, what are you going to have? If you differentiate this, we'll have 6x squared plus 2x, right? Which is what we have here in front of this e to the power whatever. So therefore means we can let this, uh, what we have in this power to be equal to a u, so that we can do substitution. So we let e to the power, uh, not e rather, we let 2x cubed plus x squared, that's to be equal to a u, and what will be a du? When we differentiate u, we are going to have 6x squared plus 2x dx when we differentiate. So at this point, we can replace uh, the x. We can replace six uh, x squared plus two x dx by du. You can see this here, right? This is du, and the du is six x squared plus two x dx. This is what we have here. So we can replace six x squared plus two x dx by du. So this gives us we replace all of this by du, as you can see, because from what you have on the right hand side, this du. That is du. And we replace e to the power all of this by e to the power u. We now can now see that this transformation has made the integration to look very, very easy. In fact, it was easy, but it has made it to look easier. So this gives us e to the power u plus the constant of integration. We now replace this u by what we had before in the let. Okay? So this was e to the power 2x cubed plus x squared plus k prime. Very important. In this example, we look at the integral of 10x to the power 4 plus 4x, all of that times e to the power of x to the power 5 plus x squared minus 2dx. So here we are going to do substitution. Looking at e, look at the power of e, we have x to the power 5 plus x squared minus 2. If we differentiate this power, we are going to have what we have in front of this e. This will give us uh, 5x plus uh, 2x. But it is not going to give us the exact value. It's going to give us 2 times this derivative. So the derivative of this times 2 will give us what we have here. So we are going to do some sort of adjustment. We'll start by letting 
what we have as the power of e that is to be equal to r u so uh, u is equal to x to the power of 5 plus x squared minus 2 that is our u and when we differentiate that our du will be equal to our du will give us um, 5x to the power of 4 plus 2x dx so this is our derivative this is our du but this du when multiplied by 2 before it will give us this value so we have to do some adjustments or balancing okay so what we'll do is we are going to take this times 2 or we bring we factorize we factor out the best thing to do is to factor out this two from here so that we have exactly what we have here which is what we have on the right hand side so when we factor out the two here we will have two into the integral of all of this quantity now we can now directly see that the derivative of this power of e gives us what we have in this bracket here with these two outside so we do our substitution we have two into the integral of we are going to replace this 5x to the power 4 plus 2x at uh, the x by our uh, du so that will be equal to our du we replace it by du because our du is 5x to the power 4 plus 2x dx and we replace our e to the power all of that quantity by e to the power u and integrating directly now gives us 2e to the power u plus k and we replace those values so this is as simple as this one can also be. Don't forget to subscribe. Example, we have the integral of y is equal to 8 to the power f of x. With such integrals, the power or the base is not e. So if the base is not e, we take e to the power lean of the expression. Okay? We take e to the power lean whatever we have there so let's see what i mean by this and then we proceed as follows so we have if we have a to the power f of x dx to integrate we take e to the power lean that expression dx this is how we integrate when the base is not e we are doing a transformation to base e so that we can follow the rules of exponential functions using the natural logarithm e to integrate so whenever you have e to the power f of x to integrate dx, we raise e to the lean that quantity. Let's take this example. We have the integral of 5x dx. This will be equal to e to the power lean. This 5x now, but the dx is still down here. So this is what we mean. e to the power lean, this quantity 5 to the power x. And then this will now give us e to the power x lin 5 you can see this e to the power x lin 5 dx but we know that lin 5 is a constant and previously we saw that when you have e to the power ax to integrate we have e to the power ax on a so we can just quote so this is identical to the integral of e to the power x okay so this integral will now give us e to the power x lin 5 all that on what on lin 5 plus a constant of integration which we can now rewrite this as follows you know that e to the power x lin 5 as we saw before it was 5 to the power x right e to the power x lin 5 is the same as 5 to the power x you can walk backwards this is 5 to the power x to the power x can be written as e to the lean 5 to the power x okay so this is it we now replace this e to the x uh, lean 5 by e to the power by 5 to the power x all that on that so whenever we have a to the x to integrate the integral will be equal to a to the x on lean a so that integral will always be equal to a to the x on lean a Another example, we have 5 to the power 4x dx. It's can be written as e to the power lean 5 to the power 4x dx. And we bring the 4x in front. We will have e to the 4x lean 5. 4x lean 
5 dx and this 4x in 5 dx can be written also as e to the power x into 4 in 5 where this 4 in 5 is a constant now an integral of e to the power x as we have seen previously which can be quoted is e to the power x into 4 in 5 all that on this constant 4 in 5 right plus k so we can further write it as uh, 5 to the power 4x all that on lean 5 to the power 4 okay so we have um, 5 to the power 4x all that on a fall in 5 fall in 5 or lean 5 to the power 4 which is lean 125 lean 125 plus k So um, these exercises are for you. Uh, go through these exercises, and our next uh, lesson is on integration of logarithmic functions. And with logarithmic functions, you mostly be integrating them using integration by parts. Integration by parts. Please do not forget to subscribe. And to click on the notifications there is no need to subscribe without clicking on the notifications because when you upload a video you will not be notified but when you click on these notifications immediately you update a video you are immediately notified and you can go through thank you bye bye So we now look at integration of logarithmic functions. The integration of most, if not all, logarithmic functions uh, require the use of integration by parts, in which we introduced in the previous uh, lesson or subchapter. So most of them require the integration, uh, require the use of integration by parts. So let us start by looking at the integral of lin x dx. So integral of lin x dx will be equal to so normally with integration by parts we require two functions but for just following x we have just one function so the other function we consider here is one so there are two functions one and there's a rule that we use for integration by parts to determine which function is u and which one is dv so here we will let our u to be equal to lin x that rule is the lipet rule lipet and lipet is the, if there's logarithmic function then that function should preferably be a u so a u here is lin x and a dv is equal to one and from here equal a du because when you differentiate lin x you have one over x when you integrate dv you have x so the integral of lin x dx will be equal to um uv that is x lin x minus the integral of v du so uv minus the integral of v du and this will be equal to x lin x minus the integral of uh, v is x x times 1 over x dx okay so this x will cancel out just be left with the integral of the x and uh, so this gives us x lin x minus x plus the constant of integration so this is the integral of lin x if you want to verify you differentiate this and you come back to this question to lin x so the rule that is used here is the lipet rule as you can see lipet so we start if there is a logarithmic function it should be the preference for u then inverse trigonometric function should be the preference if it, uh, if it is there then we have poly p for polynomial functions they have exponential functions and then lastly trigonometric functions that's lipet rule okay so this is the rule we use in choosing uh which function should be u and which one should be a dv so like i said again if there is a logarithmic function then it should preferably be a u if there is none, you check. If there is an inverse trigonometric function, it should be u. If there is none, so this is the order to choose which one should be the u. 
so if i have lock and trick then lock should be the u if i have polynomial and trigonometric then polynomial should be u because polynomial comes first let's look at um, other examples still with this so the next example we have the integral of lin x squared plus 1 dx we are going to use the same procedure here so lin x squared plus 1 you can start we don't have any uh, function before this one it's just one function so here equally uh, x squared plus 1 we will let uh, u to be equal to uh, lin x squared plus 1 according to Lippert's rule. So uh, u should be equal to lin x squared plus 1 because it's a logarithmic function. This one is a polynomial function or constant. And then our dv should be equal to 1. So from this point, our du will be equal to, when you differentiate this, you have 2x on x squared plus 1. And when you, different, when you integrate 1, you have x. So our integral now will be equal to uv minus integral of v du. So this will give us uv minus integral of v du. Uh, uv will be equal to x lin x squared plus 1 minus the integral of v du. Uh, v is x. Uh, du is 2x on x squared plus 1. So minus 2 into x squared on x squared plus 1 dx now um, from trigonometric uh, from integration of rational functions that i explained before in the first uh, lesson of this chapter now the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator are the same here so what you have to do is partial uh, fractions or let me say we have to do long division is better long division not partial fraction we do long division so when we do long division we are going to have one plus uh, 1 minus 1 over x squared plus 1. So let's focus now just on this part that we added at the end. So the integral of x squared over x squared plus 1 should be equal to the integral of 1 minus 1 over x squared plus 1. So dx. When you integrate 1, you are going to have x. And the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1. These are special integrals you just have to quote. Hmm? Or you can say that let x be equal to a tan theta, or a here is equal to 1. And then from there, we work it out, as you see in uh, integration of inverse and of inverse trigonometric functions and trigonometric functions, rather. So the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 is arc tan x. We saw in differentiation that when you differentiate arc tan x, you have 1 over x squared plus 1. So therefore, the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1 is arc uh, tan x, arc tan x, so plus a constant. Now, we now replace these values here and simplify. So all together, we'll have x in x squared plus 1 minus 2 in 2x uh, minus 2 as minus minus now gives us plus plus 2 arc tan x plus the constant of integration plus the constant of integration i love this type of integrals though we mostly meet them also in format and technical mathematics please don't forget to subscribe and to click on the notification bell let's take the third example the integral of log x dx uh, with the two functions we have seen previously we have looked at lean x now what if we are looking at log x dx so we are going to use the same procedure to integrate logarithmic functions or we can first of all transform this to an exponential uh, to a logarithmic function in terms of the natural logarithm let us do it directly and see what we have so let our u be equal to log x uh, our dv is equal to 1 here our du will be equal to 1 over x lean 10 when you differentiate lin x, you have 1 over x. When you differentiate log x, you have 1 over x lin 10. That is what we saw in differentiation. So normally, when you differentiate lin x, you have 1 over x lin e. The lin e is 1. So but here now, the base is 10. So we have the lin 10 here. 
and then the derivative uh, dv squared one so the integral will be give us x now applying a uv minus v is u we will have a u is equal to log x and a v is equal to x so we have x log x minus the integral of v v is x the u is 1 over x ln 10 we can bring out or factor out that 1 over ln 10 so we have 1 over x uh, ln 10 times x so this x cancel out this other x and we are left with just 1 over ln 10 dx but this one now like this, this is just a constant so this integral will give us x log x minus x on lean 10 plus a constant of integration you can also transform this one back to log the transformation is not an issue so we do not forget our lipet rules a lipet rule which tells us which function should be considered this helps us to find a u and dv it helps us to make a choice on which function should be u and which should be dv Now let's look at the integral of logarithms with uh, with different bases. The base here is also a. We have previously seen uh, log 10. Now let's look at log a. Integral of log a dx. So this integral, I want to do it by transformation. As I said, that, that previous one could be done in two ways. So I first of all do a transformation of base here to lean. This will give us lean x on lean a dx, where lean a is a constant, and then I can now quote. If you factor out this you bring you uh, sorry you bring this out of the integral sign you have one over lean a into the integral of lean x uh, dx the previously we saw the integral of lean x dx right so i'll just quote it here we have one over lean a into x lean x minus x now plus the constant of integration so i've quoted you can see how easy it is you'll find this also in your formula booklets what about the integral of x ln x dx? All right, let's look at this one also. x ln x dx. To integrate this, if you use lipet, let us see which one should be a uh, u. There is a lean function here, so it should normally be a u according to lipet. Mm -hmm. This is a polynomial, it comes first. So a u should be equal to ln x, and a dv should be equal to x. And therefore, from here, we have a du to be equal to 1 over x and our v to be equal to x squared on 2 and you integrate this note you don't consider the constant of integration because at the end we we'll see have another constant okay so this will give us integral of uv minus v du which will be equal to x squared on 2 lin x minus the integral of x squared on 2 times 1 over x dx so we are we, one of the x cancels out the other one we are just left with a half x dx and this integral will just be a half x squared in x minus a half x squared on 4 when you integrate x you will have x squared on 2 so times this one over 2 this was minus 1 on 4 x squared uh, plus a constant of integration so this is it for integration of logarithmic functions. Guys, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to get more of this, visit our blog www.gcmathpanel.blogspot.com where you have more of it. And do not forget about these rules which helps us to choose between uh, the variables which should be a u and which should be dv. Our next uh, sub lessons will be on integration of trigonometric and inverse trigonometric functions. We have already trashed integration by parts and you will just need to look at trigonometric and inverse trigonometric functions which will also be taking into consideration substitutions and integrations by parts do not forget to subscribe thank you and stay tuned